something I always forget to do. And I'm going to give myself a timer. I'll try for eight minutes today, see how that goes. All right, so um, welcome, everyone. I think this is our, Jen, is this our fifth webinar? This is and webinar number five. Number five, big five. So, um, yeah, we're still learning and growing, but we're going, <laughs> so that's good, right? Okay, so um, just for anyone who hasn't joined us before, um, oh, and I still have the wrong slide up there. That's really a great way to start the whole deal, isn't it? <laughs> Let us get to, um, yeah, wow. It's okay, great. so for anyone tuning in late, I'm having one of those days where just everything that could go wrong is going wrong. So yeah, just bear with me. Um, go ahead and test your audio if you think you want to test your audio today. We'll leave this slide here. And my apologies for leaving it on that weird slide a minute ago. I need to fix that one. So um, for anybody who hasn't joined us before, just a reminder that Ignis is the Latin word for spark or ignite, and that's what we are hoping to do today, to ignite your curiosity about mobile technology and mobile learning, and we'll introduce our fabulous presenter here in just one second. And this series is brought to you by SBCTC eLearning and ATL. And my name is Alyssa Sells, and I'm the SBCTC eLearning Program Administrator. And my counterpart is Jennifer Wetham, and she is the SBCTC Program Administrator for Faculty Development. And we're kind of um, two different sides of the same coin for faculty development. I do the eLearning stuff, and um, she does everything else, and she does a great job. Oh. Oh, I know. Stop it. <laughs> Kudos to you. All right. Also joining us this afternoon is our fabulous Collaborate rep, Amber Goulart. And she has so graciously agreed to attend and um, help us moderate all these sessions. And um, I think she's learning stuff, too. So <laughs> it's really great to have her here. And we're so excited to offer this webinar series to you. And um, I'd like to take this this opportunity to thank our presenter for joining us. We're a little bit different on our format today. We just have one great presenter for you, and she's going to um, have the whole time to present. So we're not going to go on the Ignite format where we have um, multiple presenters with um, about 10 minutes each. So a little bit different format today. And I'd also <laughs> like to um, thank all of our participants for joining us. And um, I know someone's going to ask me, so I'm going to go ahead and put it here in the chat. This session is being recorded, and you can access all of our IGNIS recordings there on the ATL blog. And Jennifer does a great job of keeping that updated and interesting for us. And, and we're going to get started today. Oh, just, yeah. one, just one thing really quickly. Um, I okay. have been updating the SBCTC ATL pages. And uh, so uh -huh. coming soon will be a static page on the SBTC site with all of the uh, IGNIS webinar recordings. And so I'm very excited oh, about nice. that. nice. Yeah. I'm excited about that, too. I've been trying to work out a page for SQs for e-learning, and it just happened, hasn't happened yet, but that will come our way as soon as we figure out where we can host that. So before we get started today, we are going to run through just a couple of quick things. Um, this is your meeting interface. The upper left corner is your audio video. Right below that is the participants panel where you can see who your moderators are and who else is in the room with us. Below that we have the chat. We'll talk about chat in just a second. To your right is the whiteboard, and um, then that skinny little toolbar in the middle there, those are the whiteboard tools, and um, take a peek on your panel for that, because we are going to use that in just a minute coming up. All right, so here are some more tools for you, that little smiley guy, those are emoticons, and you can use those um, to tell us fun and interesting things. Like I'll give you an example here, we'll say um, approval, so you see the little thumbs up by my name in the, the panel there. Okay, if you need to step away, feel free to click that step away button and it will tell us that you have um, left room for a sec. Raise your hand if you would like to speak. That will um, put you guys in numerical order and we'll call on you in that order. There's also a polling tool there. And um, right now it's a check mark, but in just one second I'm going to change it to be um, ABC so we can do the poll that we're going to do. 
You've got some other permissions there. And then you have a little blue microphone. And when that little blue microphone is on, that is how you know that you are speaking and people can hear you. And when you're done, please turn that microphone off because we can still hear you typing and breathing and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, so sometimes I forget to turn mine off, and I'll try to remember to do that today. All right, here is our chat window. Um, feel free to type questions and comments into the chat as we go, and um, we can revisit some of those at the end. And then um, I actually didn't ask, um, Sue, this question is for you. Normally, we um, don't interrupt our presenters while they are presenting, um, but that's because we have limited limited time and several presenters, would you prefer that people ask questions as you go or hold them to the end? Oh, please interrupt. Ask them as you go. OK, please interrupt, she says. So uh, feel free to raise your hand. And when you do raise your hand, I'm going to raise my hand right now so you can see what it does. Um, it puts a little hand raised by you and um, lets us know that you'd like to say something or make a comment. And then we'll also be watching the chat. So if you have um, something you want to say or contribute or ask and your mic is not working, um, please feel free to put it in the chat and then we'll ask those um, to Sue as, as we're going. All right, next up are our whiteboard tools. So we're going to practice on this slide. I would like you to go ahead and um, go to your whiteboard tools. And that's that skinny little toolbar in the middle. There's um, a blow up version of it there. And your toolbar, your actual toolbar, should be the, to the left of what you're seeing, that big one there. And I want you to find the sun icon. And if you point and hold it, you can select um, a pointer tool for yourself. I'm going to take the smiley face, and I'm going to go ahead and practice here and put a smiley face there. We're going to use this on our next activity. So um, please take this second just to go ahead and do that. And while you guys are practicing, I'm going to change our polling type to multiple choice. All right, um, so we are ready to go. OK, looks like you guys have figured that out. So we will move on to our next activity. This is just a little fun thing we do because we are curious to see where you guys are. We have people joining us from all over the place. Um, I guess we're making the assumption that most of you are in Washington. Um, but if you're not in Washington, please feel free to um, type into the chat for us and let us know where you are. And I'm going to find Everett. It's very, very tiny, and I can hardly see it. But I'm up by Snohomish County, so there I am. So if you guys would all um, pick a spot close to where you are and let us kind of see where you are. Oh, Spokane. And Whatcom County, Snohomish, lots of Seattle. Some Olympia. Jen, is that you, Olympia? That's me. <laughs> yeah. And people, um, looks like um, down in Clark County, down past um, into Oregon. So cool. All yeah. right. Um, so we do that just for fun, just to kind of see where our audience is. And oh. then, oh, oh, that's my timer. That's OK. All right. I gave myself eight minutes instead of 10 minutes. So. Um, let me I was going to say we have one person two. attending from Florida. <laughs> from Florida? That's awesome. We do okay. not have that on our so, map. <laughs> no, we don't. I'm sorry. So um, quick question here. In addition to knowing where you are, we're kind of curious who you are. So um, if you're full-time faculty or part-time faculty, administrator, staff, librarian, um, or other something else we don't have on here, go ahead and use that polling tool. And um, let us know who you are. I'm administrator or staff, so I'm going to mark C. And um, those poll results show um, right next to your name. And then I will take one second here, and I will publish our poll. Let's see, publish responses. OK, so there you can see um, lots of folks didn't answer, uh, lots of administrators and staff, and some full-time people joining us today. So pretty cool. All right, and that's just kind of a curiosity for us. And then um, I added this one in here because I like to have a sense of humor. And I was just curious um, who is already using mobile technology in your classroom. So if you are A, no way, it's too scary, go ahead and mark A. Um, if you're interested but haven't tried it yet, mark B. Uh, C is please help. Um, I've tried it unsuccessfully. D is tried it, but still experimenting, not sure if I like it. And E is, yes, sirree, Bob, love it, and so do my students. So I'm going to mark, I think I'm going to be D on this one. All right, so let me publish those for us. 
Uh, there we go. All right. So, um, oh, good. Um, nobody says it's scary. That makes me happy. So I'll put a happy face there. Okay. Uh, moving on. Um, just some meeting etiquette. Uh, reminder, raise your hand and use your emoticons to let us know um, what you're thinking or feeling, a job well done, or that you agree with something. Those are kind of fun to, to use in the chat. And that talk button, um, click that when you want to talk. So when you click your talk button, that's when your little blue microphone will go on. And then um, reminder to type questions into the chat if your mic is not working. And then, whoops, I lost my slide advance. Hold on. Okay. Um, we always start with just some basics um, definitions before we turn it over to our presenter. And we are talking about mobile technology and mobile learning today. So mobile technology basically is a portable device that, um, like an example would be a smartphone or a tablet. Um, it might have any of the following. It could have um, phone capability, texting, internet access, um, GPS navigation, could have a camera, could have games, um, email, a variety of apps. So um, these mobile devices that your students are bringing to the classroom, there's a lot of functionality there that um, could possibly be put to use in your classroom. And then mobile learning is basically learning on the go. Uh, it's just the use of devices such as smartphones and tablets for um, personal learning. And um, Sue France from um, Highline is going to talk to us today about harnessing your students' mobile technology for the forces of good, which I think is an amazing title. And um, Sue, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you now, unless, Jen, do you have anything you'd like to add? Nope, only that Sue is a very highly reviewed presenter every time she presents, and so we are in for a treat. Yes, we are very lucky to have her joining us today. So um, take it away, Sue. You know, I really have to talk with you guys about your, um, your introduction, because uh, what you're supposed to say is that, you know, she's all right as a speaker. You know, you, you might get something. <laughs> Um, don't count on it, though, because, you know, when you put the expectations that high, things are a little crazy. Sorry. All right. That's all right. That's all right. Um, oh, and look at that. I already have a fan. Um, yeah, so this is my blog, and uh, as you can see, it's technology for academics, and I am writing specifically for academics. Um, all kinds of technology, and as you can see, my latest post here was on uh, Heartbleed and how LastPass uh, uh, password manager can really help you with that. So the, the real reason I brought you to this particular website is that you can click on Tech Handout and um, you can so download. We're, not, we're still. I'm still seeing my slide. Did you do? Did you take over and do the web tour? Because I'm not. I'm not seeing anything yet. Well, according to my screen, I'm showing my desktop. Sue, I think you need to just check the follow. There you go. There we go. OK. Yeah, check the follow button. All right. I didn't do anything, but you guys got me covered. OK. All right. OK. Well, let's, I've got you now. So um, does everybody else um, see what Sue wants us to see? If you're not seeing anything, let us know. Um, you should be looking at a background of a keyboard, and it should say technology for academics there. OK, Erin Wilson has confirmed. Yes. OK, you're good to go. Perfect. Yay. Thank you so much. So the Tech Handout tab uh, allows you to download the most current version of my comprehensive technology handout. And we're not going to go that way today. Today, we're just going to focus solely on mobile technology. And the, the mobile technology I actually want to start with is not digital at all. I am I'm pretty stoked about this. This, if you can see my, um, my video, can you see my webcam? Yes. yes, we can. Or do you have to switch to see the webcam? OK. So this is a, uh, this is called wipe book in the webcam. Let me switch over to the, there we go. So white book is a dry erase um, notebook. So I can write in this notebook and then use a towel and I can erase it. It's 
very, very cool. Thank you for that tip. So it's um, very, very nifty. You can go to whitebook.com and, and order one. And I think that they also will send you a dry erase pen along with it. Um, now, of course, this isn't, this isn't digital. And if I were a student, I would be all over this technology. Um, so what students can do, and what I also do with this, is that if there are notes that I want to keep on my mobile device, I use a program called Cam Scanner. It works with smartphones and tablets, um, Android, iOS, and Windows 8. And what Cam Scanner allows you to do is when you run it on your mobile device, it turns your camera into a scanner. And you can save the file actually as a PDF. And then if you're using something like uh, some sort of cloud storage service like Dropbox or Google Drive, you can upload it immediately into, into those services. So very, very handy. Um, Cam Scanner is a free app, yes. They're, they do have a paid for version that gives you all kinds of fancy functionality that I've never had any use for. But yeah, the free version is fantastic. Let's see. So what about your students who have mobile devices? Let's go to today's meets. And if you've seen my presentations before, you've probably seen me talk about today's meet. Um, today's meet is like the old chat rooms, if you remember those. So we can go ahead and do this. Um, I'm going to create a room called Ignis. And I'm going to change it so that the room is only good for two hours. And I'm going to create the room. So what you can do on your computer or on your mobile device is go to todaysmeet.com slash Ignis. Type in your name. Click join. And now you can type in any kind of message that you want. So we'll just say hi. So we'll wait for some people to come in. Yes, Alyssa. Alyssa, did you raise your hand? No. <laughs> 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 there we go, we've got some people coming in. So I know some instructors who use this during class. Um, oh, terrific. Stephanie, do you want to talk a little bit about, about how you used it? Sure. Hi, Sue. Hi, everybody. Um, I've been using this in my Seattle U class with uh, graduate students, um, teaching them adult teaching methods, um, or teaching methods for teaching adults. And they were all really, really skeptical about the idea of teaching and encouraging students to use mobile technology during class and letting them carry on this sort of conversation behind the scenes. And I encourage them to think about the fact that, you know, people are thinking these thoughts anyways. And, you know, sometimes they could be texting each other or they could be just writing notes on paper and passing it back and forth, although usually graduate students don't do that kind of thing. Um, but nonetheless, bringing it out into the open and allowing people to share what they're thinking about what's going on in class at that moment is really freeing. And um, after we tried it for a couple of sessions, students really loved it. And one student um, took it into his own teaching and used it teaching um, uh, teaching engineering to some ESL students. And these students were having a hard time uh, being able to understand some of the language that he was using. And they would use the back channel to clarify and support each other in um, identifying what, what he was saying meant. And it really made these students a lot more confident. So there's really all kinds of ways that you can use tools like today's Meet um, as a really successful teaching tool. Thanks, Stephanie. That was awesome. 
one of my, uh, I have a colleague who uses it when showing videos. So as the video is playing, students can enter their comments and questions about the video in today's meet. And he's monitoring all of their comments as they're coming in. And if there seems to be a lot of discussion around a particular topic, he'll pause the video, the class will talk about it, and then he'll start the video again. And, and that uh, back channel conversation will continue. What, and there are, there are a bunch of other tools out there that do something very similar. What I love about today's meet is, as you can see, if you've got the URL and you can type, you're in. So I want to take a minute, and uh, you heard how Stephanie is using it and um, how one of my colleagues uses it. As you're thinking about this for yourself, is there some place where you would be interested in using it? Anybody? think it might be kind of cool to use? Well, I'll just go ahead and mention, I, you know, my favorite thing about meeting online with my students is this chat feature. So I'm thrilled about the idea of having that in a classroom as well. So it's great. I was always one of those students who was uh, very quiet in class. I had, um, um, yeah, I was very quiet in class. Uh, it wasn't until my senior year, I don't think, until I actually said something. But I was certainly thinking plenty of things. I wonder if I had had a tool like this available to me, if, if I would have used it, and if it would have made me more comfortable faster in my classes. So. Yeah, and I think that you're absolutely right about the same thing as using chat inside of Blackboard Collaborate. Um, yeah, and, and as Stephanie mentioned, it does make instructors a little nervous that all of this is going on behind the scenes. But, you know, if students are text messaging each other, you don't get to see what they're saying. So at least here, you can go back in and you can see it. And for those who are interested, you can then also down here at the bottom, you can get a transcript. So you can download the whole thing and save it as a PDF, as a, as a record. And I think it comes in in a format that if you're feeling especially, I don't know, whatever, technologically savvy, you can copy all the comments that students have made during a class and drop them into something like Wordle and get a word, word cloud. So the kinds of things that students are really talking about will, will show up pretty quickly. Uh, Jennifer, what are you thinking? Um, I was just seeing, um, first of all, this is amazing <laughs> and so exciting. I was just seeing that Erin asked a question, would you allow the students to use aliases so they can ask things anonymously? Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Um, I think it would probably depend largely on the nature of the course. Um, I used to teach human sexuality years ago, and I think that that would be a place where during certain classes, I would definitely go for that. For other classes, I might have actually a participation grade where students have to use their real names. And I also want to mention at this point that not all students, and we all know this, not all students have a, a web-enabled device, whether it be a, a laptop, a tablet, a smartphone. Not everybody does. But what you can also do is put, put, put students into pairs or small groups where at least one person has such a device and that person can report out for everybody else. I was just, I was just about to type in, um, I'm really glad you're addressing this, this issue of equity because um, I know I've, I've heard faculty address, you know, raise that particular concern and so I think it's, Really great that you're addressing that. Um, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, it's um, it's an interesting one. The who was it? Uh, Pew Center for Internet Research. They do an annual yeah. survey of students, and one of the things that they have found is that students who are low socioeconomic status, um, especially younger students, are much more likely to have a smartphone than any other technology because it's, it makes more sense for them to have 
one device, a smartphone, rather than also having a laptop, a desktop, home internet connection, um, a phone, landline, all of that. All right, well, let's see the, the today's meet going, because we have that for the next hour and a half or so. So feel free to, to continue to use that. So let's do, let's do another one. Um, let's switch over to Socrates. And I've, I've also talked about Socrates in sessions before. So Socrates would be if you want to do mobile choice questions, true false questions with students. So this time, if you go to m.socrative.com, and then when you get there, this is going to be the student, the student facing version. And when you get there, the room number is Highline. lowercase. If you are playing on a mobile device, um, there is a Socrates app that works pretty well. It, it works fine on my phone. On one of my tablets, it doesn't. So I don't know what's up with that. So as we can see, we've got three people who've made it into the room so far. And seven, you guys are fast. So from here, so if it's your room of students, and you can ask your multiple choice question. And it could be something that you have on a PowerPoint. This is completely independent of, of any other software. So I'm just going to ask a multiple choice question. And what you should now see on your screen are the letters A through E. So A would be, I'm getting some ideas all the way down to E. This is a complete and total waste of my time. So what I do in my class is I have this, I, I blank out the whiteboard. Uh, I blank out the, the screen so students can't see the responses coming in, only I can. So it doesn't influence their responses. And then um, when I'm ready, I just show this to the students. So you can see that once you have voted, for those who are playing, once you have voted, the, you get a circle going around and around saying waiting for teacher to start activity. Yeah, Alyssa. Um, so I just was curious if you're still web touring, if we're supposed to be seeing what you're seeing. I mean, I'm following along because I have two screens on my computer and I've got what, you know, the, the website on the one and Blackboard collaborate on the other. But all I still see on our uh, webinar screen is your keyboard image. So I just wanted to make sure if we're supposed to be following along, if people were able to see what you were doing. So. Yeah, you should be seeing what I'm doing. Yeah, we're not. Well, at least I'm not. I don't know what everyone else is seeing, but I still have your blog and your keyboard screen. So yeah, no, it doesn't look like anyone else is seeing it either. So um, the things that you've been talking about, unless we were <laughs> logged in on a, another browser, um, we weren't seeing what you were doing. So are you trying to web tour? Yeah, OK. And then um, put in your URL for where you want us to go. Well, no, I'm not doing a web no. tour. No. I was, okay. I, was, I was sharing my desktop. Okay, because we weren't, we weren't seeing it. At least it wasn't advancing for me. So, I, I can see uh, pull some poll results now. Okay, so all right. Well, let's let's. So I'm let's just afraid see. people might have been a little bit lost because I wasn't really following everything you were doing because I couldn't see what you were doing. So. Yeah. If you have multiple monitors, that might be the problem. Well, the, the yellow outline was around this particular screen. And, and well, we've got it, it now, so why don't you try okay. doing something else, and we'll t I'll tell you if it changes or not. OK. Let's go back and do a, all right, so there was what you've been looking at this entire time. So you've already seen what that looks like. This is the white book page. Um, and then cam scanner, for those who are interested in cam scanner. And then uh, this was today's meet. 
So everybody seeing this now? Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, no, I'm still stuck on the same slide we were on. It's it's just not going anywhere when you go. So I'm not sure what. Hmm. Yeah, if you were clicking through stuff, we didn't see anything. Amber, do you have any ideas on this? Yeah, it's so, so, so you there there now we're at the chase meet. You are so you are sharing your entire desktop, not just the one application. It should be going through. I'm not sure it could be some glitch with the internet. Um, it's hard to say. It's good that we're recording this though, because I can follow up with support. Yeah. So there's today's meet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It may be. It may just be lag. All right. So this is okay, the main. There's, okay. Okay. There's yeah. the main soccer new screen. All right. So this is what I see. So if I wanted to do another multiple choice question, then I would just hit multiple choice and hopefully the screen changes for you. Yep, it seems to be working now. All right. <laughs> it says waiting for well, responses. Response. All right. So uh, now just put in your favorite letter, A, B, C, D, or E. And then we can watch the responses come in. And then whenever I'm done, I just said end activity. So you'll notice that with this, I, I don't know who you are. If I wanted to know who you are, and I, I do this sometimes with, um, I do a couple little extra credit things in my class. So I can actually have a pre-made quiz. So I'm going to pick a pre-made quiz. And with these pre-made quizzes, I can make them student-based or teacher-based. So I'm going to do this as teacher-based. So for those of you who are playing, what you should be seeing on your device now is a place to enter your name. And you can see what I mentioned earlier. If you're working with someone who doesn't have their own device, enter that person's name too. And I can watch the names come in. And then... Once we have some people, we're not going to wait for everybody. Once we have some people playing, then I'm going to send this next question out. So people are now seeing question number two. And don't, don't try to actually answer this. Just pick a letter at random. When I give this talk to a psychology faculty, they always feel like they actually have to answer. So I watch the results come in, I then display the results to students, and then we talk about whether or not they got it right, got it wrong, and then when I'm ready, then I push the next question out to students. And then whenever we're done, I just hit end activity. And now I can email the report to myself or download it. So here's the downloaded version. I'm now very slowly opening Excel. <laughs> and this is this is totally um, violating FERPA laws, but um, we can see that Stephanie was the only one who got this particular question correct. Good job, Stephanie. <laughs> so that gives you a sense. Uh, there's also a default exit ticket mode. There is a oh, space race is kind of fun. We can do a quick space race. So let me pick a different quiz. And this is also a pre-made quiz. And I'm going to have three teams. We'll auto-assign team colors. So now, some of you have been uh, assigned to the yellow team, others to the red team, others to the blue team. And the first question, again, is going to be your name. And then the next question will be an actual content question. And if you get the question right, so if you're the yellow team, one of your members gets the question right, then the rocket will advance. There it goes. 
So you can actually have students spread out across the room, or you can stick all the yellows together, all the reds together, all the blues together, and have them debate. You can do it however it is you want to do it. And as you might imagine, students get really competitive. And uh, no offense to the blue team, but you guys suck. There we go. There's some progress. <laughs> and then when we're done, we get into the activity. And I'm gonna, um, I'll spare you the uh, the shame, and I'm gonna say no report on that one. Managing quizzes, right there, you can do that. So this is the old Socrates version. This is the absolute stable version. <laughs> Look at you guys. <laughs> This isn't even the stuff that you're studying and you're excited about it. Imagine your students. So this is the new Socrates. This is uh, the beta version that they are currently working on. They've actually been working on this for um, about a year now. So it's, uh, it's a slicker design. Uh, same idea, though. Start a quiz. Um, so there are all my saved quizzes. We can go back to dashboard. The quick question is the multiple choice, true, false, short answer. And we can do a short answer here as well. So I can ask my question here. Um, I don't know. Favorite color. And I'm going to limit you to a single response. And we're going to leave this as anonymous. And yes, you can name your room anything that you want. So now, on your, on your web-enabled device, uh, there's a place to enter a word, a short answer. So just type in what your favorite color is. I'm not seeing anything on my screen. Did you change site? Do we need to go to the beta version, too? Uh, you shouldn't need to. It should be the same, but... Yeah, oh, my dashboard did I... didn't refresh. Sorry. Well, then let's just do it over here. Here we go. How about now? Yep, I got it now. All right. That's what I get for switching versions in midstream. So here they all come. And now I can see we've got purple, blue, purple, blue, blue, purple, red, blue, and pink. So I'm going to take out the extra ones. So now we have one red. We have one purple, one blue, there we go. And now I can push this back out to you to vote on responses. So now what you, you should be seeing are pink, red, blue, and purple. So just tap on the one that you're voting for. All right. So we get a sense of how Socrative works. Um, so this is essentially a free, and this is free. I don't know if I mentioned this. Uh, Socrative is free. And, yeah, and I'm going to say no report to this, too. So uh, Socrative really came about when uh, everybody else had the physical clickers, like eye clicker and um, turning point. And Socrative basically said, well, you know, students already have their own devices. And students may forget to bring a remote, an expensive remote, to class, but they are never without their phones. Uh, the limit right now on Socrates is something like 40, 35, 40, 50. I don't know. There, there's some, I'd have to go and look. But I, I want to say it's like 50 
people limited to a room at one time. Uh, if you want to do it with more than that, if you contact them, if you contact Socrative, they will um, expand how much is available to you. Can it archive the results? Um, with the built-in quizzes, yes. With the other ones, um, multiple choice, etc., I don't think it keeps those. Yes, there is an app version with this. So you can have um, a Socrates app for students and a Socrates app for the presenter. So let's let's switch gears. Let me <laughs> this is my new favorite one. This is called Plickers. And have anybody used Plickers before? They're, uh, they're a brand new product, and I, I just wrote about them on my blog just a few weeks ago. So with Plickers, you only need one mobile device, and that is yours. This is what the students get. So each of these cards, there are... 40 in this PDF, and you can get them up to like 63 or 64. You'd have to email them for the for the the bigger stack. But each card is numbered: card one, card two, and so on. And each card is different. So if students want to vote B, the student would hold up their card with the B facing up. If they want to vote C, they rotate the card so the C is up. And what I have behind me is a simulated classroom. My tablet or my phone, you download the Plickers app, and this can actually pick up from quite some distance. Um, it actually picks up uh, a half sheet of paper. These are five and a half by five and a half from, I don't know, 30 feet away, no problem. So let's see what this looks like. So, I've now started the question, and on my device, if you want to blow up my uh, video there, my webcam, on my device I can see the letters, and at the top there's a camera icon, which is going to be too small for you to see. If I tap on the camera icon, it will flip on my device's webcam. And I point the webcam over here at the cards. It reads the cards just like a QR code. If I've tied the cards to individual students, they can actually, I will have this screen that you're seeing on my on my desktop, I have this screen open so students can see when their vote has been recorded. And then I can switch over to the graph and I can see the student responses. And students can change their answers if they'd like, as long as I still have the question going. So if I want, I can actually display this in real time. Switching back to the grid, I can actually see what, what each individual student has responded. And then when I'm done with the question, I can go back to my classes. And here I've got an archive. Uh, somebody was asking about, can this be archived? Greg was asking. And this, is, this one is archived. And I can see each individual student response along with uh, the graph for that particular poll. Um, one thing that they are looking to do that is a, is a top requested feature is a download. So the ability to download this as a, as a CSV or an Excel file. 
Yeah, definitely affordable. Um, if you get a printer, print them out. I assign them to students. Students write their name on the back. Um, in fact, we just sent a couple batches over to our print shop. They, they're putting them out on cardstock, and then they're going to laminate them. And if they are laminated, it should be laminated with a matte laminate and not a glossy, glossy laminate. So it doesn't, um, you don't get reflections coming off them. So I, honestly, how cool is this? Uh, it, it's a little creepy when you first see it happening. Um, students are like, whoa, okay, that was weird. And, you know, maybe someday we won't even need the cards. Students will just need to have a certain facial expression, and the device will be able to pick it up. So let me pause for a second. Questions, comments about Socrative or about Plickers? All right. All right, so let's go. Let's go back to student cell phones. So um, as many of you know, if you're using Canvas, you know that students can set up Canvas so that they can um, get text messages if they want. So. When, I announce, when you, you as the instructor post a new announcement, you can say, OK, new announcement. Student says, I want to get this on my, as a text message. So Canvas does have this neat text message capability, as, long as, you know, as well as being able to connect students through other means, like Facebook and Twitter and so on. So, um, but I'm, I'm really intrigued by being able to text message students. So. What's really cool about text messaging, and once I started using this service called Celly, C-E-L dot L-Y, um, I never felt so powerful in all my life. When you email students, sometimes uh, they eventually get around to reading your email, and sometimes that never seems to happen. If you text message them, they will get it immediately and often will respond immediately. So. Celly allows you to create cells, um, a class of students, a group of people, and within that cell, you can um, invite people to participate. So I invite my class. At any given time, I have about half my students opting into this, and, and it is totally an opt-in sort of thing. And Students don't have my cell phone number. I don't have their cell phone number. Everything is being sent through the Celly interface. So one thing that I can do is I can send out poll questions. You know, I don't know what the limit is. Um, if you got thousands of students, good for you. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what the limit is on number of people for a cell. I think it's fairly high. Oh, student life. Oh, 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 oh. Um, that makes sense. Um, I don't know right offhand, but if you check out their website, I'm, I'm certain it's on there someplace. Or email them. They're very responsive. Um, it's got it's got to be a lot because I know that um, like elementary schools are using Sully to communicate with parents uh, for stuff that parents need to know. So let's see how this looks. I'm going to create a new message here. This is going to go out to my intro psych students. So I'm actually going to create a poll. And I could just send them a regular text message. Not a problem with that at all, but polls are kind of fun. So I'm going to, uh, earlier this week, we covered positive and negative reinforcement, positive and negative punishment. So one thing that I do is I will, um, push out um, questions so that wherever it is that they are, they have to stop and think about, oh, yeah, what is that? So I have the power to get them to think about psychology anytime I want. It's, it's really, really pretty incredible. 
Uh, and the testing effect, I don't know if you're familiar with the testing effect. The testing effect, a uh, concept in psychology that says that the more practice you have at retrieval, the better you're going to remember content. So, um, so if you can sprinkle retrieval throughout the, throughout the week, then the better students are going to be able to remember it. So let me send out my question here. Add an answer. Or a negative punishment. So I'm going to send that out. And I'm going to click on this. And now we're going to kick back and see how long it takes for my students to respond. So we'll give them a couple minutes for for responses to come in. And then uh, I'll walk you through the process of how to create a cell yourself. It's really, it, we'll do a cell just for this group right here. And then once the session is done, I'll, I'll delete the cell. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Rather than wait for responses, we'll just check back in and, on this in a little bit, because I see that my time is getting short. So let's switch over to cells. We're going to start a new cell. We'll call it Ignis. Oh, I have seven characters, 14. All right. That's a beautiful cover photo. We'll start the cell. So. There are a couple ways that you can join. One way is by this public link. Another is if you want to use your cell phone, just send a text message to 23559 and put at Ignis14 in the message. <clears throat> and I didn't set up a password with this. So you shouldn't have any trouble getting in. There are different settings for the cell. So this membership, we're going to make it so anyone can join. Um, we're going to change this to curated chat. In open chat, uh, you would do this with your family. So any reply goes to, out to everybody. With curated chat, which is what I do with my students, is I can send out to everybody or individuals. When students respond, they just go to me. And if I want, I can then forward that out to everybody else. And the alert only, in the case of student services, in the alert only, it's, it's one direction. You send it out, there's no response. So uh, we're just going to keep this private. You have, to, you have to have the secret code in order to get in. So we can see that one person has joined. So while you're doing that, let me just check back in on my poll question. So here we go. So I've got three responses so far. And two of them are right. They just don't know it yet. So once I get a bunch of responses to this, I can then close the poll. And when I close the poll, it sends out the responses to everybody. Oh, and here comes another response as we're sitting here. And really, there's no reason why you couldn't use this in class. Um, oh, thank you, Brian, for looking that up. Selly cells have no limit on members. Now I know. Thanks. I really appreciate that.
And the other thing that I really like about Selly, and I guess my last my last comment since the timer has just gone off, is that you can schedule these in advance using the timer. So if I wanted to, at the very beginning of the week, I could schedule one per day to go out at different times on different days. Well, according to this, is still private. Well, thanks, Jennifer. I didn't create these graphics at all. These are, this is all, uh, actually, I selected this one. I didn't put it out, but I selected it. <laughs> okay, I'll take total credit for it. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate that. I just think a lot about how, you know, our classrooms have these very physical spaces that a lot of times we have no control over. You know, like, you're sort of scheduled in a room because your department has it and the chairs are fixed and the podium is immovable. Mm -hmm. and Sometimes I, I think that with online environments, we sort of recreate some of those weird structures. And so, you know, I mean, because it is a, a space, right, for learning. And so I just really love the pictures and just the way it's laid out. It's very clean. It's friendly. You know, it's great. Yeah, I think Sally's done a pretty good job. When they first created it, uh, if, if you go back and you look at my original blog post on Sally, I need to actually do an updated one, but my first blog post on Sally, it uh, had a, actually a very juvenile look because they were really targeting elementary schools. And once they realized that lots of other people wanted to use it too, they got away from some of the, some of the, the, the graphics they had been using. But as you can see, these are defaults. Um, all of these images over here, that's just automatically assigned by Sally. Students didn't upload these themselves. You can obviously stick in a photo if you want, but so in that way it's still, you know, it, it keeps it light, so I guess there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I used Ning um, for, a, well, for a long time, you know, in my classrooms, and sort of the same thing where different iterations were either very student-centered or just sort of random, and <laughs> yeah. so it's interesting history. So true, so true. All right, guys, um, I, we're getting close to our wrap-up time, and um, I'm just going to switch us back to the whiteboard. And I need to upload one little slide for us. And um, right now I'm putting into the chat our um, survey link for today. So um, we always ask everyone to fill out a survey at the end, if you don't mind. Um, the one shown here in the image is incorrect, though. Um, I did neglect to change that today. So um, the one I put into the chat is indeed the um, a correct survey link for today. And um, Jen, do you have anything else you want to add as we are um, wrapping this up? I was just going to say that um, I sent out an email through the listserv today about faculty learning communities and um, for applications for the 2014-2015 year. And I think this would be a great topic to have a faculty learning community around, so I just wanted to sort of put that in there. And and Sue, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, you know, Alyssa and I sent out a call um, because we had a lot of faculty interest on this topic, and you know, Sue, you volunteered immediately, and I just wanted to say thank you. Um, it's just been a marvelous presentation, and I've learned so much, <laughs> so thank you. Well, thank you. This and is, uh, any opportunity I have to talk about technology, I'm all over it. <laughs> and yeah, on the slide, th oh, sorry, Jen, I thought you were done. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying you were great. <laughs> that was it. Yes, that was done. She was fabulous. I really enjoyed it. Got to learn lots of new tools and try lots of interesting um, new stuff. And hopefully, you'll all take some time to investigate those more on your own. Uh, the slide that you should be seeing now is what's coming up for our next. Um, IGNIS webinar, and that'll be on May 8th. And on May 8th, we are starting um, the faculty learning community presentations. And um, these are the three colleges here that will be um, presenting for us. And 
in May, is it, Jen, is it May through June? I don't remember. I don't have the schedule right with me that we're running IGNIS weekly because we have so many um, great presentations to bring you. Yes, and actually, um, let me just, I just posted, let me just, um, sorry, I just posted this to our website, faculty learning communities. I should have had this all ready to go. I apologize. Um, I did post the full schedule to our FLC page on our website. Hey, Amber, how do I cut and paste? Aha, there we go. So I just posted that URL. So if you click on that URL, it'll take you to the full list of all the next, the upcoming webinars. Um, and incidentally, there's other information on that page as well, like um, uh, highlights, highlights of what the faculty learning communities are presenting at the upcoming ATL conference. And Sue, you're presenting at the upcoming ATL conference, aren't you? Yeah, that's correct. That's going to be my um, my general cool tech, tool, tech tools presentation. And I will have the clickers with me. I'll definitely be talking about that one live. That's great. Do you know? offhand, I'm just looking at the schedule here, do you know, oh, here you are, you are, oh, wait, no, you're not, uh, like, wait a minute, do you know what time, what day and time you're presenting, by chance? I do, what's the date again? Um, it, it, you would either be presenting on Thursday, April 30th, or Thursday, April 1st, or Friday, May, sorry, April 30th, or Friday, May 1st. Friday, May 2nd. Friday, May 2nd at 11 and 15. Aha, there we go. Friday, May 2nd at 11 15. Sorry about that. I was trying to like look at something while I was talking and <laughs> I'm just looking at the schedule. Here, I'm going to put the session descriptions into the chat window. So if people want to look at um, your presentation, the description for your presentation and meet you face to face, that would be fun. So, great. Well, thank you, uh, Sue and Alyssa. Is there anything else we need to cover? Oh. Um, I was just putting our food for thought for today um, into the chat of what can I do with mobile devices that would be impossible to do without them and um, add to that in your classroom. So just kind of a thinking question for um, you all just to consider, you know, the potential of um, like what might be able to be done with mobile technology or mobile devices. Um, in your classroom. Also on um, the ATL blog, you'll find a copy of our PowerPoint from today. It has not been posted yet, but there are some um, articles in here about uh, mobile learning and mobile technology that you might want to check out. Feel free to um, email Jennifer or I um, any great technologies um, that you've tried or anything interesting. Um, that you think other people would be um, wanting to hear about extra resources for mobile learning. Um, if you want to go ahead and do that, um, feel free to contact us. And here is our contact information. Yep. Any final thoughts from any of our participants? Yeah. All right. Um, Stephanie, thank you again. Um, yeah, it was it was super impressive, wasn't it? Um, oh, and sorry, I was reading uh, I was reading a comment from Stephanie, but <laughs> Sue, thank you again. <laughs> um, and I also just wanted to say too, you know, like I think it's really intimidating to present on technology, even if you're super experienced, because so many things can go wrong. And Sue, you were so gracious and calm <laughs> throughout. <laughs> that was perfect. Well, I, I once gave an entire talk on technology where um, I had no technology whatsoever. So <laughs> I, I, I can I can I can do it with pantomime. I got it down. Yeah, that kind of <laughs> stuff happens. So, Absolutely. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn off our recording. And um, if anyone wants to hang out and ask questions or interact a little bit more, we'll be here for a few minutes. Absolutely. Goodbye, everybody.